everyone. Welcome to the 2017 Geneva Motor Show. This is the AutoCar team reporting from the show floor. Nikhil, what are you looking forward to in this year's show? Uh, well, there's a lot. Again, uh, starting from uh, the lower end, uh, there is the Maruti Swift, which is obviously going to be very interesting for us. Uh, the Tata Racemo, again, big stuff. And right to the other extreme, we have the Ferrari 812 Superfast, which I'm really looking forward to see. And Lamborghini is also showing the Performante, which is the sportier, even sportier version of the Huracan. Uh, Shapur, uh, there is some India stuff over here, but uh, the yeah. Germans are with tip, uh, quiet this time. Cinema is really the focus and the place where people love to show the new stuff. But uh, they're a bit quiet on that front. There's only one uh, version of the Tiguan shown from Volkswagen, not much from Audi either. But of course, like Nigel said, what I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing is that new Swift. I mean, the car has got so much importance for our market. It just sells in such big numbers, and of course, people love it. And Suzuki say we're going to put the focus back on driving. Of course, we can't test that here, but we can see how good the car is on the outside. So lots of relevant stuff really, uh, obviously uh, Tata Motors making a big play, now Tata Motors has actually tripled their stall size from past Geneva shows, this is the 20th year Tata Motors has been at Geneva, they were here in 1998 and this time they've taken their biggest stall ever, so really a big show of commitment from Tata Motors, not just for future products in India but for future products in Europe as well and as both Nikhil and Shapura said, there is that Suzuki Swift. So let's get down to the show for quickly and have a look. Now the most relevant car at the Geneva Auto Show in 2017 is obviously the Swift, a huge seller in India and this is an all new car started from scratch. Now, the platform is shared with the Baleno. It has some things in common and that means it's extremely light. The lowest weight of this car, 840 kilos. Now, we're seeing the car for the first time in the flesh. Let's take a closer look. Now, this new Swift is quite different looking from the earlier car. A big evolution, a big change from the earlier car. The nose is the biggest difference, the floating nose. It's got a Jaguar F-type like nose. Of course, the headlights a very like the Swift and keep the identity of the car. So too the blacked out A, B and C pillars. But there's a new element here. The door handles in the C pillar make it quite different and give it a nice clean body line here. And that makes it easy for you to see the cuts that run right across the car on both sides. Quite nice. Now the Swift has never been famous for leg room in the rear and comfort in the back. But here you have the decently long seat good enough support, you stand at a good height, nice headroom and wow, even legroom, I mean when have we had that in the Swift, something different, something nice. And the other problem the Swift always had was that it had a tight boot, it was pretty small. Now here on the new car, we're going to have no such complaints, loads of space, really nice and wide, you can split the seats and that gives you plenty of flexibility and a lot of space, two big bags will go easily in here. What I really like about the center console, of course, is this unstructured sort of design. You've got the vents here, there's no defining line, you've got the touch screen that pops out, and these three HVAC controls, well, they just work perfectly. Now, the new Swift on the inside has this lovely new steering wheel with these chrome bits. It looks quite upmarket and really nice to grip. Proper leather steering wheel, nice and sporty. So do these dials pop up Alfa Romeo type. Lovely, legible dials, white on black, classic stuff. Of course, there are also some recognizable bits like the power window switches here, the lock and unlock switches, and yeah, they do remind you that it's just the Suzuki. While we were excited about the Swift, Hon was at the Tata stall waiting for the launch of Tamo. Well, I'm here at the Tata Motors stand and what you see in front of me is their latest baby, the Tamo Race Mode. Yes, this is a sports car and that too a mid-engine sports car from Tata Motors. You better believe it. 
this is more than just a sports car though. This really is the new direction forward for the company. This is really the incubator. The Samo brand is the incubator for new high-tech products, low-volume products like the Samo Rain. But let's take a closer look at the car. Now, as you can see, this car has got the right proportions. It's got the right road presence. It is a little compact. What this car also has are butterfly doors, not quite unique, we've seen them on the McLaren F1, but it really does give a bit of a wow factor to the race mode. And what's really interesting is all the little design details and elements. In fact, this is really a showcase of Tata's design capabilities. Lots of cuts, lots of creases, but it's the interior as well which we're going to have a look at. Well, I'm not sure how much of this is really going to make it into production because you've just got uh, three LCD screens over here. Transmission, they say you can see a two pedal layout over there, but really automatic transmission is going to be an AFP. I don't know how well that's going to go in a car that's supposed to be sporty. I would have expected a dual clutch, but clearly this is all about keeping the cost low. This is about playing with Tata's DNA of really making something very, very uh, cost effective and for good value for money. Just look at the design and styling. This car really stands out and you can expect it to turn heads on Indian roads. And Tata Motors has promised that it will be available sometime in this financial year. And the price, they haven't revealed that, but we think it's going to be not more than 25 lakhs. From Tata, it's over to another player that's been making waves with its new form and styling. It's Volvo. And it's over to Nikhil now. Now, one of the big reveals at the 27 Geneva Motor Show was of this the new Volvo XC60. Now this is a crucial car for Volvo because it is its most successful car. Now the XC60 is built on Volvo's new SPA platform which also underpins the XC90. So this is a car with a good base to build upon. It will be sold with 2 litre petrol and diesel engines and there is also scope for hybridization. Now India is likely to get the car by the end of the year and uh, there's going to be lots to look forward to. Let's see it in a bit more detail. The front is characterized by the smart headlight with the Thor's hammer detailing and the shape of the tail links it to the old XC60. Further, those attractive L-shaped taillights distinguish it from the larger XC90. Interestingly, Thomas Ingenlath, who heads design at Volvo, told us the team consciously steered away from an overly tough SUV look in favor of flowing smooth lines. The dash is dominated by a large portrait-oriented touchscreen that is your go-to place for most controls. Quality levels are really impressive. Occupants in the back get a touchscreen for the climate control system too. The rear seat is spacious and the boot is nice and large. The other big SUV that had us really excited was the new Range Rover Velar. The Velar shares its wheelbase and aluminium architecture with the Jaguar F-Base. The range response system will be standard on the Velar to ensure it's as capable off-road as any model with Range Rover in its name. I'm sitting in a mock-up of the actual Range Rover Velar's cabin and this cabin stands out for one particular reason and that is its second touchscreen unit. Now you have the typical one here and there's another one uh, lower down for your seat controls, phone controls, etc. It's really got Range Rover's cabins into the present and I think that's a very big deal. Rear seat occupants are guaranteed a good deal of space and luxury but there will not be any 7 seat versions of the Velar. Another SUV of interest at the Geneva Motor Show was the Volkswagen Tiguan. This is the new Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. Now, as you may already know, Volkswagen is set to launch the Tiguan SUV in India. So what is it that makes the Allspace special? If you look at it, this is a slightly longer version of the Tiguan, longer wheelbase and longer rear overhang. So where does the length come into the picture? One second.
Ah. So, that is what makes the all space special. It's got a third row of seats. Now, I wouldn't call this a very spacious cabin. In fact, space is very limited in the back, but the third row of seats does bring in a certain level of practicality, which could appeal to Indian buyers. Unfortunately, the Tiguan for India will only be the five feet version, but if it clicks, this could be on the cards for India as well. Talking SUVs, Jeep didn't have anything new to show per se, but there was one model of great interest to us. Jeep and India should be a match made in heaven. Jeep specializes in SUVs, India loves to buy SUVs. Unfortunately, the Grand Cherokee and the Wrangler are just too expensive. Now, here's a Jeep that could just fit the bill for India. It will be affordable, it's the right size, and, well, it could just take Jeep to the next level. It's called the Compass. Let's see it in more detail. In terms of size, price, and positioning, the Compass will compete directly with the new Hyundai Tucson. It's a smart-looking SUV, and many will see it as a shrunken-down Grand Cherokee. The squarish profile does make it look the business. There is a direct connect to other Jeeps on the inside too. So, this is the interior of the Compass uh, and it's quite nice. It, uh, it's got that Jeep DNA so there's a nice chunky feeling to everything. Uh, the plastics at least on this one are quite nice, soft touch plastics. We are yet to see what we'll get in India but at least what we will get for sure is the touchscreen system. There will be a dual zone climate control at least on this car. Uh, nice steering, uh, chunky, nice to hold, and uh, it's generally a very nice feeling cabin. Also important is this, the 4WD mode switch, and that is something we will be getting in India as well. All good, but how is the Compass for rear seat passengers? Now the Compass has a fairly spacious cabin, as you can see the legroom is more than sufficient. There is a decent amount of width as well, but headroom is a bit tight. Then again, this version gets a full panoramic sunroof and that generally works against headroom. Uh, as for the seat itself, it's a bit on the firmer side and a touch upright too, but we'll just have to take a final call on the version that actually comes to India. The Compass is all set to launch in India within 2017. Engine options will include a 170hp 2-litre diesel as well as a 1.4-litre petrol engine, both of which are likely to be offered with manual and automatic gearboxes. We estimate prices to be in the region of 25 lakh rupees. This is going to be one promising SUV. Well, I'm at the Kia stall at the Geneva Motor Show and behind me is the 2017 Picanto. Now, Kia isn't in India yet. They are planning a big launch in this market in the next couple of years and it's likely one of their main models would be this. The Picanto, which really goes up against the Hyundai Grand, I think. A lot of sibling rivalry between Hyundai and Kia. A lot of shared mechanicals as well. Lexus had a rather large display at Geneva too, but the one car everyone had their eyes on was the new LS500H. Now this behind me is the all new Lexus LS500H. This is the flagship of the Lexus name. If you recall, the LS is the model that made Lexus Lexus in the early 1990s. So it's an all important car. Now Lexus has gone all out with this one and as you can see they've gone for a very radical look this time around. Uh, the Z-shaped headlamp, that radical grille, it's got a very gangster air about it. The Lexus brand launches in India soon and the new LS is sure to be part of the range within a year. There was a lot else to see at the Geneva Motor Show 2017 and the good thing is a lot of the cars on display look set to make the journey from the show floor to the showroom floor in the very near future. That is a very good thing. 